We call him just to put this suit has gone out naked for the evening, unattended and insecurely fastened. A perfect invitation for somebody to break in. For months, Chummy has been watching this suit, taking note of the owner's habits, the time he leaves it and the time he returns. Now he searches for a means of access. A button left unfastened, careless hole in the pocket, a weak stitch or two in the patch on the rear of the premises. Now he finds the place where the valuables are kept. He's clever or straight to the wallet pocket. Now to break in. Well, that's it. So don't let it happen to you, will you now? Well, mind how you go and drive carefully. And now the story of another criminal scourge. Tonight we present the drama of one of the most fiendish criminals ever to prey on innocent citizens. He was... <laughs> Channel 1941. Just a minute, Jim. Are you sure this is the English Channel 1941? Well, taste it and see it. You're right, Jim. English Channel 41. I've been here. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, Jim. Now, get out. As I was saying, the English Channel 1941. Across the silent strip of water in England, coastlines were deserted, except for people. <laughs> Despite the threat of invasion, elderly gentlefolk of Bexhill on Sea still took their evening constitutionals. Mm. Henry, what a lovely summer evening. Yes, the cold wind's lovely and warm. I think I'll take off one of my cardigans. Here, hold my elephant gun, men. I don't know what you brought it for. You can't shoot elephants in England. Why not, men? Well, you know that out of season. These two old people are, of course, talking rubbish. As any right people will realize, there are no elephants in Bex Hill, which is in Sussex. They're only found in Kent, north of a straight line, drawn between two points, thus making it the shortest distance. Ah, oh. oh, well, if that's how it is, I can't shoot any. Oh, Henry, we'd better get home. I don't want to be caught on the beach if there's an invasion. Neither do I. I beg, beg you. <laughs> Min? What, what? Did you hear a gas oven door slam just then? Don't be silly, Henry, lad. Who'd be walking along the promenade with a gas stove? Lady Lewisham. Apart from the obvious ones, who'd want to... Oh, 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 now, madam, what seems to be the trouble? She was struck by a batter pudding. And on a moment too soon. Congratulations, sir. I didn't do it. Coward, hand back your OBE. Come in, I'll take you home. Give you a hot bath, wrap you down with anti-vapor wrap, put a plaster on your back, give your feet a mustard bath, and then put you to bed. Do you know this woman? Devilish man, this is Min Bannister, the world's famous poker player. Prove it. Play this world's famous poker. Thank you, madam. I'm satisfied. Now, get off this promenade. The Germans are only 28 miles away across the channel. I must report this to my superiors. Goodbye. As I lay drying myself in bed that night, I kept wondering, who on earth would want to strike another with a batter pudding? Obviously, it wouldn't happen again. I was wrong. The very next day, a strolling outdoor pirate was savagely assaulted. Oh, my! All right. What's going on here? I'll be walloped with a batter pudding, officer. I'll put that down in my notebook. Now, tell me all. Well, I was sleeping on a piano here, when all of a sudden a gas stove draws up and out beeps a man with a batter pudding in his hand. What's that up there, he says. Up I looks and wallop, right in the mush. I see. Have you ever committed a murder? No. Hmm. 
Can't get you a nut, then. Tell me, why were you sleeping on the piano in the field? Because the grass was damp, mate, and I don't want to get the nudges again. My wife's got the lurgy, my eldest boy's got the clean, mate. I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry. Sergeant Throat, take this man along to the station. Yes, sir. And put him on the train to Birmingham. Look out, mate, I tell you, I was wallop. With a bat, I put his wallop, he went splat right up me mush. I dismissed the strolling penis story as a lie. Obviously, the batter pudding had been self-inflicted. Pardon me, sir. I am the manager of the Red Indian Youth Hostel. We have had an incident. Really? What happened? We were sitting down playing ping-pong in Oriental style when suddenly a gas tower approaching from the east from the direction of forwards and the occupant is leaping out and throwing the batter pudding right into the mush of Bertram Raj J. Singh. He is flooding backwards in the direction of down. Dad! Then that old man sleeping in the piano was telling the truth. Yes, old boy! Constable! Go up to Birmingham and bring him back. I'm sending someone for you. Oh, mate. Now, off you go and say nothing about this, especially to each other. <laughs> Hello, mate. Go back quickly. Yes, we brought the train by airplane. Now, what did this attacker look like? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see him, mate. Mm-hmm. Would you recognize him again if you didn't see him again? Right away. Although I must admit, me eyes ain't what they used to be. No? No, they used to be me ears. Oh. Sergeant, take this man to Birmingham and put him on the police station for cruel. Just pardon, collaborate, sir. In the months to come, 38 batter puddings were hurled at Miss Fanta. <laughs> He must take the first train to large. Scotland Yard will call in. My name is Scotland Yard. Pleased to meet you. Have a truncheon. Thank you. Ah, now to business. These batter puddings, they were obviously thrown by hand. Not necessarily. Some people are pretty clever with their feet. For instance? Tom Cringing Nut. Who is he? He's a man who's pretty clever with his feet. What's his name? Jim Flat Croc. Sergeant Threat? Yes. Make a note of that. Right. Anything else? Yes. Right. Good. Now, Seagun, these unending stream of batter puddings, were they all identical? All except the last one. Inside it, we found this. An army boot. So the dreaded hurler is a military man. Any troops in town? The 56th Heavy Underwater Artillery. Get that at once. Arrest the first soldier you see wearing one boot. Oh, oh, oh. So you. How dare you come to my headquarters with such a... I tell you, Major Bloodlock, I'm looking for a criminal. You find your own. It took me years to get this lot. I must find the man with only one boot. All right. But don't take all day, do you hear? I walked along the ranks looking for the soldier with one boot. But my luck was out. The entire regiment was barefoot. Hey, hurry up. We want to get the Betty Boys. Who are you? Large private echoes, but most people call me by my nickname. What's that? Nick. <laughs> Just a minute. You're only wearing one boot. Well, I've only got one boot. Yes. But isn't that a strange place to wear it? Well, it fits. Let me see that boot. Hmm. Size 19. What size head have you got? Size 19. Yes. The man's defense is perfect. Then a strange thing happened. Weeks passed, and no more reports of batter pudding hurling. Any news, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I think we can close the Dick Turpin case now. We've discovered where he's hiding. Where? Under a gravestone in Highgate Cemetery. Are you sure it isn't a disguise? Oh, I never thought of that, sir. I'll send a man round with a police shovel. Months went by. Still no sign of the dreaded batter pudding hurler. I walked the streets of Bexhill at night disguised as a human man. Then suddenly... Out of me, my friend. Can I have out of a match? You see, my dust uh, was gone out and my batter pudding is just browning. Certainly. Keep the whole box. I have another match at home. Sorry. Thank you, McHugh. You have saved my batter pudding from getting cold. There's nothing worse than being struck down with a cold batter pudding. Oh, ah, yes, indeed. Good night. Good night. I watched the strange man as he pulled his gas to the way to the darkness. But I couldn't waste time watching him. My job was to find the dreaded batter pudding hurler viewers who think that Seagoon is not cut out to be a detective, please write to him care of Rotten House, Rope 2. 
Inspector, an important clue. Min had a letter this morning. A letter this morning. I'll tell him about it. Min. We'll tell him. She had a letter this morning. You mean you know about it? You please are very quick, I must say. Yes, yes, yes. What about the letter? I had one this morning. Let me tell him. Yes, you tell him. Min had a letter this morning. Gad, why didn't you tell me? It must have slipped my mind. Where was this letter from? It was postmarked Africa. And inside was a portion of butter pudding. Yes, he hadn't forgotten me. So, he's in Africa. We've got him cornered. Blue Bottle? I heard you call, Captain. Blue Bottle, you and I are going to Africa. Good. Can we take sandwiches? Only for food. Any questions? No. I can't answer that one. Can you? No. Ignorant swine. Got the down sergeant throat? Yes. Right. Then we catch the next troop ship to our hills. Also on board were Major Bloodnock and his regiment. When we were ten miles from Algiers, we heard a dreaded cry. Mine ahead! Dreadful sea mine ahead! What did he say? There's a mine ahead. Matt! Lower the boats, women and children first. Boat full. Lower away! Hey! Make room for me, I'll pay you ten pounds! Business is business, Igor. I'll pay 20 pounds for a place in that boat. <laughs> Good in, Captain Seagull. Thank you, Eccles, my friend. 30 pounds for a place. You ain't my friend. Good old Seagull. My pal. 50 pounds for a place in the boat. Who splashes? Who did that? I did it, I did. I grabbed their touches and up into the water. Yeah. Good old bottle, you saved my life. And mine. Never that rotten tart dead in for me this week. No dead in this week, no. I like this game with no dead in echo. Oh, I like it too. What school did you go to? A reform. Tricked by the brilliant planning of Blue Bottle and Eccles, Bloodnock and I scrambled onto a passing raft. For 30 days we drifted to and fro. Then hunger came upon us. Ah, if I don't eat soon, I'll die. And if I die, I won't eat soon. But wait, can I smell cooking or do me ears deceive me? Dad, a gas stove. Could this be the end of our search? Uh, I'll knock on the oven door. Just a minute. I'm in the bar. That voice. I've seen it before. Good morning, I... Ah! Move. I arrest you as a dreaded butter pudding hurler. Wait, how can we prove it? Look. That batter pudding is all the evidence we need. We've got him. But it wasn't so easy. For days, for weeks, for months, they drifted on their open raft. Let's eat that batter pudding or we're going to starve. No. Do you hear me? No. That's the only evidence we've got. Though I, I must admit this hunger does give one an appetite. We must eat it or die. Never. Should Seagoon eat the batter pudding and live, or leave it and in the cause of justice die, please send your answers on a postcard to this address. Battersea Dogs Home, Department 4, Battersea, Halifax, Norfolk. And much good may it do you. Good night. Please, would you mind telling the nice people that I'm not being dead this week? Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, it is both a privilege and a pleasure to announce that the Laird Blue Bottle was not dreaded this week. Yeah, I'd like this game. Yeah, what a swine, you. Just as a nice man said, I've not been dead. It's splat, bloody flint, a walking kind of...